Hello my friends. I'm going to go over how the basic bell siphon works and what I have in my aquaponics uh, system. <clears throat> okay, right here I've drawn a rectangle representing my grow beds. Okay, the grow bed will have uh, a level of gravel in there, uh, usually an inch or two down from the top surface. Okay, you want to put a uh, drain system in, but to keep the gravel out of your drain, you put in a collar or a, a gravel barrier. And this is usually a four to six inch pipe. The bottom of this will have slots cut in to allow water to enter into this. And I usually use my table saw to make those slices. Okay, um, after that's in, we don't need to see those slices. You need to put a standpipe in here. This is gonna be the drain. This will also set up the height of the water when the grow bed is full. So right here I have it set so that the water height will be about one to two inches down below the, the top edge of the gravel. And you need to have that top dry so that algae doesn't grow up there. So you keep that water level set. Uh, my first uh, grow beds, mine are uh, barrels, so it'd be a half of a barrel. Um, they're cut in half, so that's leaving about a 12 inch height total. So then I come down, these were set at um, 9 inches. Uh, the first ones that I made were this, they were just straight tubes. So uh, this, this height here, we put it about 11 inches top of the gravel, then about an inch to the top of the barrel. That was my 12 inches in the height. So this first one was 9 inches. This is where I want to keep the water at maximum height all the time. Okay, then this goes into, feeds into a drain. And what you normally do is make an L shape. And then that goes into the drain that will feed your sump tank system. As the water comes up, there's water coming into this all the time. There will be a a valve that's coming in. This is your water intake and of course a valve up here that uh, controls the water flow coming in. So this water flow is set so that the water height will continuously fill. When it gets up to this top of the pipe, water will then start going down the pipe and water will exit as quick as it's going in. Now what you want to do is create a siphon the way to create a siphon is you have to trap the water in here. So we put what's called the bell. This will be a, a piece of tubing with a, a cap on the end of it. As the water comes in here, it flows into the collar and it starts filling the level. The level continuously comes up and uh, when it hits this top, the water starts going down and it will flow and you need to have some back resistance as it's flowing in here in order to it coax this into a siphoning action. And this L shape usually creates enough back pressure that some water will be backing up down in here and it will start that siphoning action and then that will continue. As it, as it starts siphoning, it'll siphon faster than the water supply intake. And so the water level then will start drop, start dropping, dropping. As it drops down below the bottom of this bell, and this usually has some spacers holding it up, as it gets down to this bottom area here, it will suck some air in. So it'll make a gulp of air and that will break the siphon. Once the siphon breaks, it starts all over again. The water starts 
coming in, filling up, hits, breaks, makes a siphon, and continues. It should be a continuous flow. The problem you get into is uh, getting the, the siphon to start. Sometimes it won't have that little back pressure and it won't make that uh, siphon begin because of that. A couple of ways to improve that, and I went through every one of these in the building of my system. We gotta put this back on here again. The first thing that I did was I created a funnel at the top of that standpipe. This funnel gives a larger area here for the water to come in. And as the water is coming in, it has this type of a capillary action where it's backing up. When it finally does break this uh, force here, it'll give a little rush in there and be in a larger area, it'll come in a little quicker. This also will create a type of a swirling action in there which will cause that little bit of a back pressure and create the siphon to start. Um, that worked fine, but then as a long term, I started having some of the systems failing on me. And uh, I also had some of the systems not wanting to break the siphon when it gets to the bottom. The way that uh, you break the system, and I saw this from Web for Deb. He's pretty good in there on, on this. Uh, he put a little vent in here, and I just drilled a hole in silicon, a, a piece of uh, vinyl tubing. Then you come down here with this vent tube, and you put a cup. And that cup usually is set that it can rise and fall. it'll go up and down uh, with the water. So what happens to break the siphon is um, water will, as it's uh, siphoning this out and the water level comes down, this will be at the sitting down here at the lower level. As the water starts to uh, suck air, it'll suck the water out of this little cup and it will suck air up into this tube. As it sucks the water out of this tube, the tube will float. That will separate the water from coming into this cup as the water floats. Then it will just keep sucking air and that will cause a positive break in that siphoning action. That works real, real well. But I still had some of my bells plugging or stop functioning. The next thing that I did to make it more reliable was I created a trap at the bottom. I made these out of 90 degree elbows and these I glued together. Most, most of my fittings are just press fit. This I do not want to have air to trap. And then the standpipe is plugged into this. I also had a uh, bell shape or a funnel shape at the top and of course the bell siphon goes across that. What I found out, once this 
action starts working, water comes in through here, starts flowing out when it fills here, and starts coming down. Um, this bell wants to float. And the reason it wants to float is you have water full in here, up to this level. Now you have air pressure exerting in here. That air pressure is causing this bell to float. It's also pushing downward. That pressure, air pressure pushing downward is pushing on this water that's trapped in here, in the drain. This air pressure has to have enough to push this water so that that water will make a burp of air through here. Once the air burps in there, it's kind of like a little bit of a compressed air, it'll come in and uh, that then will uh, create the uh, siphoning action, a more positive siphoning action. But to overcome this thing from floating, I uh, have to put a weight on there to weight it down. So all of these now have weights on it. The other thing that happens because of this air pressure or water pressure that you need to push this out, uh, this water height is going to be higher. So what I found is I had to shorten this standpipe from the 9 inches, I had to shorten it to, uh, went from 9 to 7 inches. Went from 9 to 7 inches. So that set this quite a bit lower. And I had to shorten up my bell. You only need to have about a 1 inch airspace. If you have too much, it, it doesn't function as well. When that's shortened, then I put a cut red brick, small section of it, on top of this to hold it from floating. And at these measurements, the 7 inches versus the 9 inches, the water level that's in the gravel is still at the same depth. So this is the improvement that I made. And I had these used at both half inch and three quarter inch diameter. And they both seem to work just as well as each other. Now, the problem that I run into, this is real reliable, but I had a couple of the systems still fail, and the reason the system failed was I cap all, all my openings so that I don't have light coming in to grow algae. So I was using a 4 inch collar. This is the one with the cuts in it. We can erase this. We're looking at the collar now. This has slices in it to allow water to come in. That's the gravel shield. I was putting a four inch PVC cap over that. I had a cap that was very tight and I, I had trouble getting it off. I couldn't open it up. Well, apparently what that did is it also created a uh, air trap. So it wasn't allowing atmospheric pressure to get in here. You know, the water was keeping it trapped. That caused the failure. So what I started doing with these caps that I'm using is I cut out sections off the sides so that it can just slide over and it left air gaps at that top edge, but it still was enough to block the light. The other problem that creates a failure with this 
is roots growing in through these cracks and it, they will become a mass of roots and it will actually grow right down into your drains and just plug everything up. So a routine maintenance is maybe once a month or every other month you go and you just pivot these uh, uh, gravel shields. You just turn them in, in the gravel and by turning them, spinning them in 360, it'll cut any roots that is coming into there. And I'll do this with the uh, all the gravel shields that I have. And some of them I'm still using, instead of a 4 inch, I'm using a 3 inch, smaller. And at the top, I drew it shorter because that won't erase. At the top, I cut a slot on both sides. And this, this gravel shield here is going to, they, they all come up higher than my grow bed. That doesn't race well. So it's coming up higher and what I do is I put a stick in there and I have a, or a collar that I have made and then I, that gives me a lever and I can do a 360 rotation on that. That will cut any roots that are coming into here and then uh, just reach down in there and get a wire hook and snag those roots and pull them out. These pieces here, um, when I glue these together, the trap, I try to keep the top as close as I can to the bottom of my grow bed. That's about it. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.